Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more EU4 and Banar. Overhaul mod playing as the Kingdom of Laurent. We have a looming disaster. Unfortunately, the uh, aristocratic coup is uh, gonna fire in a bit less than a year and a half. Well, maybe about a year and a half. Almost exactly, actually. Okay, so we need to fix that. Um, I know that I should be able to remove some land from the nobility and that will solve the problem. The issue is they're already disloyal. So removing lands from them now is only going to cause them to rebel. Uh, and that would suck. But yeah, if my math is correct here, uh, and I'm understanding this correctly, if I just remove a bit of land from them, we can sidestep that. Which means I don't absolutely have to deal with it right now. I can wait a minute until we have a bit more loyalty. Um, I don't think there's any advantage in recruiting a minister. Absolutely not. Um, oh, good. We can actually demand some power, finally. Yes. Merchants, give me. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. So we are trying to annex one of our small vassals, South Viswal, which is just a very small city right here worth 26 development and a market town, which is great. With some money, we could be upgrading some of these things, I suppose. That would be an option. Production! Oh, wow, yes. Hillwater can get me 1.64 ducats per month just from the stupid meteor that fell from the sky. You know, since when have comets been a good thing in EU4? I guess it's not a comet if it lands, but... Still, like, I'm not accustomed to things flying in the sky and turning out good for me. Radical reforms. Two of our most trusted advisors, Ruben the Mighty and Varian Cook, have been talking a lot recently. Uh, oh, right. This is... Oh, cool. Did we actually get that event? Sure enough. We got the inflation and the trade efficiency guy, so we can get some free power. Um, if I tell them both to get out, we get a ton of um, power, and we can have this event fire again in the future. If we lose the stability, we can get mercantilism, which is worth 500 diplo, but I can get 400 power between two different types here. I'll have to hire two new advisors, but they're only level 1 and level 2, so I don't care. Get out of here, both of you! My little brain too small to understand the things you're trying to tell me are so important. Alright, so what do we want? Oh good, another trade efficiency guy. He comes right back. Perfect. And then you, national unrest. Um, okay, I guess. We don't have any use for missionary. You're not of the right culture is the problem, though. So I don't think I can even promote you. Stability cost... I think I could justify this. Because I do need to buy some stability. Also, I think he's cheap. Ish. And level 2 means more power. So, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Wouldn't mind getting the level 2 discipline person as well, but whatever. We'll work with this. Alright, so a general dies. Of course, a general dies. We have not been able to hold on to these guys for very long. Good lord, these guys are going back and forth. Look at that. These chips are just flying all over the dang place. I was worried about performance issues for a while, but no, not anymore. I think it's partly because this um, particular trade region where you can protect with your ships is only like four sea tiles, so they bounce around outrageously fast, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, how are we doing in terms of relations with our little vassals? For the most part, we're looking just fine. Appleton would not be a bad thing for me to uh, annex as well, so let's go ahead and start improving relations with them. We've maxed out relations. Well, not maxed out, but we can't go above 200 with Wex. So our personal union appears to be in good shape. That is an entire HRE... No, sorry. EOA member that we will be able to annex in the future. Uh, looks like I can just go ahead and grab the discipline person. I mean, land maintenance modifier saves me money. Credit where it's due, but I, I prefer discipline. Discipline is good. So that's just more monarch points. Good. You start making money, you get extra power. That's what you do. It's how you play the game, dang it. All right. Probably time to go ahead and start reducing the power of the aristocrats. Our uh, half-elves are going to get a little angry at me, but what can you do? Let's see. Do we want to put someone in charge? Well, we have queens, and queens are not allowed to lead fights. So, no. We cannot have a king or queen be in charge. Let's go for Allos Cheese Man. <coughs> Sorry. Um, terrible general, by the way. But let's just go ahead and have that person be in charge. Uh, we need to find some good places to remove power from the nobility. Here's a good example at, let's say, 12... They'll probably fire, like, eight noble regiments over here. So let's get them get their morale up. Obviously, you need to pay attention to this. So this is going to fire in May 1472. We only have a few months left to deal with this. I'm going to go down to speed four just so I can pay a bit more attention. I've been trying to practice playing the game, by the way, with the game, like, just running nonstop at, like, speed two or three. Still don't think it makes for the best YouTube content. I mean, I don't ever pause, which is great doing that, but 
I still think it's technically faster to pause, talk about things, and then just go ahead and go to speed 5. Alright, we're going to reduce this, or move you, that's 9 noble regiments rising up in revolt. Uh, they're not going to be particularly happy, it reduces their loyalty by a lot more. We're almost certainly going to go down to 0 loyalty with these guys, but if we can reduce their land percentage, it's fine. So we'll get to immediately kill them. Not enough, unfortunately, to get them below the 100% that we're looking for. The good news is, having an excuse to remove land from the nobility does mean that I can start gaining additional uh, manpower and money from these territories because they don't have like a minimum autonomy level. So that's not so bad. 10 at a dominant trade hub? Yeah, I think that sounds like a place where I want to remove some power from you. Who formed a union? Gawed became... What? I'm sorry, what, 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 what? My rival, Gwed, just became a junior partner under Alenke, who doesn't even have a flag. Are you freaking serious? Oh, that ain't gonna last. <laughs> okay. No, great. So I can rival the Emperor... I really don't want to, but that's all it's giving me. It's a penalty to my power projection. Dude, with only one rival, I'm not going to have any power projection to begin with. Ugh, I guess I need to rival the Emperor. I didn't want to, but I will. I'll rival him so I don't take penalties. Gosh dang it. Well, they're going to break free soon. I have no doubt. <laughs> There's no way that this freaking giant powerhouse Gawed is going to stay under a one-province miner. I don't know how it happened in the first place and why I wasn't given an opportunity to contest that. I would have gladly contested. All right, nobility, you don't get this. Local power vacuum. Local unrest goes up. Noble regiments. Whoosh. Die, die, die. Was that enough? Yes. Okay, so we no longer have the looming disaster. We have zero loyalty nobility, and they have so much influence that it's actually seriously hurting me. But aside from that, we're doing great. How you doing? We're doing great. All right, let's continue building more stuff, more money. I want money. Improve the capital, lose the manpower that I don't have. Sounds great, it's free. <laughs> I think it's free anyway. Uh, we could upgrade our market town. Thousand ducats, yeah. Local development cost reduction. So wait, does development cost reduction... Yeah, local development cost is minus 10%. Is that better or worse than farmlands? It is better. Urban centers are better for development than uh, farmlands are. That's actually great. Okay, good to know. That could play a role if I want to spend some of my diplomatic power, or whatever power, to uh, try to force an institution to spread faster into my territory. Could be very helpful, actually. Let's go ahead and start the annexation here. Since I have a surplus of Diplo power, I'm not making any anymore. But I'm annexing two vassals, so it seems fine with me. Uh, more province provincial buildings. Yes, there must be more to this provincial life. Yes, it's a marketplace and it makes you money. It's good stuff. Gimme. I'm gonna go ahead and split these troops up. It's lagging in the weirdest spots, I've noticed. I really don't think I understand why. Do you want to mothball this fleet? Yeah, I'm just going to mothball you. We're not going to use you anytime soon. Let's just make more money. So how much more uh, manpower do we need? Oh, good. 11,000 summit. Yep. Yep. We need a lot more manpower. Powerful mage bastard child. Hmm. Well, I mean... Magic knows best. It doesn't tell me what I'll get. However, a 243, while a... Very mediocre um, air in favor of a magical child. Yeah, let's do that. A 620. Well, pff, I don't think I came out ahead there. I mean, we're powerful, which is great if I need absolutism. But since absolutism hasn't begun yet, that was of questionable value to me. So, yay? On the other hand, lots of admin power means I'll finally get that stability that I've been looking for. Speaking of stability, do I just want to go ahead and grab this? I mean, we can go ahead and... Oh, screw it. We're just going to spend the power. Boom. We're going to get the mission done. Recover from the Lilac Wars. Give me more money. 
for a while. So now I need to restore the army, and that means I need more manpower. Also, I, I haven't even built up to my dang force limit. Are you serious? I haven't. Ah! I need so many things. It's too much. It's too much stuff. It's fine. Continue with the production. So this freaking meteor, dude. See, that's what I was talking about, by the way. Did you see that weird lag? What was that? That doesn't make any sense to me. This freaking province, though. Holy crud. Goods produce 4.18. Making six ducats. It's like, it's like better than Dalaskogen. Or Dalaskogen, or whatever you call it in Sweden. Freaking heck, amazing stuff. Wish there was something I could do to make it better. Can I give this to the mages? Ooh. I wonder if they would like that. It's supposed to be good for magical stuff, yeah? Let's see. We do have unrest decaying. Sort of, almost, for a couple of guys. So that leaves only the Portnam people left. Okay. Unfortunately, I do have a bit of aggressive expansion to worry about. And this complete lack of manpower is killing me. What I think I need to do, and I hate to do it, is consolidate regiments. And the reason being, yeah, I'm not actually any more powerful, but now I don't need as much manpower just to recharge. And it doesn't cost me anywhere near as much money to maintain divisions that don't actually have, like, manpower. Oh, land leader fighter. Yes, let's do that. Okay, so my force limit just went up a lot more, which of course makes it harder to complete my mission. I need oodles and oodles of manpower. That's what's coming down to. I need oodles and oodles. Let's go ahead and build up some barracks. Let's spend a little time working on those. Yeah? Speed five! Why am I doing Christmas music? Oh, right, because it's after Halloween, which means I'm already hearing the freaking Christmas music. All right. Uh, nobility gain loyalty. Could really use that. Don't want to lose stability. I will accept a slight lack of government reform progress in order to speed this up. They're gaining 0.14 per month. It's not great, but it's getting somewhere. Um, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to upset them even further because the Robber Baron's Chastise is going to go away in 1480, in six years. So, and there's nothing else going to expire anytime soon. I don't know how we got ourselves into that position. Like, when I first got a general from them, I don't think that was going to get us over the 100%, unless I was just really not paying attention. Which, maybe. That could be the that could be exactly what happened. I don't know. All right. Well, let's continue making some good progress with our offensive ideas. We're gonna have better generals from here on out, which is nice. Military access, sure, by all means, take. I don't care. I don't even care, man. Do you have a fort, by the way? You do have a fort over here. Okay. It's a good spot for a fort if we're gonna have to go against Gwed in the future, who, by the way, is still a loyal vassal. Are you serious? Defender against Frostwall. Frostwall. Okay, so another one province miner attacked this guy, who is no longer a one province miner because he's got a giant attack dog. Why would you attack someone with this as a personal union? Something has happened here, and I, I don't fully grasp what it is, but it makes me scaled. It scares me. Alright, well we're generating some manpower, finally. 676 men, it's not enough. It's just not enough. I can make some states. That is a thing, yeah. But I'll hold off until I actually have conquered that state. Okay, we have some separatists that fired. And, uh, of course, I forgot to turn on the fort. So, freaking yay. It's too late now. So, we're going to have to siege down a fort, which is going to cost me valuable manpower because I'm an idiot. And we now have years of separatism because I wasn't paying attention. Fine. Our army's Ilan strikes fear into the enemy. 25 prestige. That's actually pretty good. We are kind-hearted. Monthly war exhaustion goes down. That's actually really strong. Uh, wow. Wow. Really? Wow. Okay. Those guys fought well. I mean, I knew my general wasn't very good, but yikes. Okay, well, let's try to kill them before they have a chance to fully regenerate. There we go. Jeez, dude. That was that was way worse than I thought. Okay, did you break free? No, but I no longer have a rival again. Why did I lose my rivalry? What happened? You're still the emperor. I don't know. We are going to issue an embargo against the emperor. He's not... I mean, you know, considering 
he doesn't absolutely hate me. He probably should hate me a lot more than he actually does. I deserve it. A champion of the jousts. Losing legitimacy would really hurt right now. That said, is it really that big of a deal? No, I'm not having unrest issues. And I don't need absolutism. Income from Vassal is not a big deal. You know what? I'm going to take the general with the 100. The 100 power. A 4440. I take. Is pretty good. Let's go ahead and enable some army drilling for a bit. Might as well. We're already at full army maintenance. I think we should go ahead and start building up some army professionalism. Good way to possibly improve your generals. Or kill them. You never know. Um, and also, with army professionalism, I could just slack in recruiting standards, and that's a good way of getting some extra manpower since I'm having so much trouble. Alright, we've integrated south of Visval. Am I still making any progress on these guys? Vassal needs to be of 190 opinion. I don't think that's true. Unfortunately, I think my diplomatic reputation is now so low, we are not making any progress. I probably should have done something to upset the Vassal. To prevent making progress on it, so we could have timed this better. Yeah, that's that's an issue. Alright, well, in the meantime, it's not gonna... Ugh, freaking armed professionalism gone again. Right, well, we're not gonna continue upsetting the, uh, the nobility. Um... Yeah. Well, it shouldn't be costing me anything as far as annexation for a while, so fine, we're just gonna gain some diplomatic power. Some people are supporting the independence of Gwed. I could actually assist in that, encourage them to break free, and then my historic rival becomes an ally. But I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for an excuse to kill them. How strong are you? Out of curiosity. 33,000. They're about as strong as I am, but they have manpower, which makes them better. So, yeah. We put ourselves into a bit of a weird position. All right, go ahead and drill your armies for a bit. Let's just keep building up some army professionalism, dang it. I've lost all that I have been gaining, but whatever. Eventually, this will turn into something good, and it just gives some extra drill to my armies, which makes them better. Good for an initial fight. Oh, we started making progress again. Slightly? We made a tiny bit of progress. I'm not sure what happened. And we no longer have an eligible rival? No, we have one. Somebody didn't. I don't know who. Whatever. That's not a lot of manpower. Um, I guess keep making some money then. Would help if we made some more states, of course. Invest in an idea or invest in tech in a year? I think we go for the tech because... Um, I, I, I kind of like the idea of having some cannons. So, yeah. Also be able to get Renaissance Thought for an extra idea group. Great expectations. The nobility gain in... No. No, no, no. Definitely do not want to give them more influence right now. That's proving troublesome enough as is. I will probably go for a diplomatic idea group. Just because... Um, I have so much diplomatic power saved up. Maybe we should go for exploration ideas. Have you considered this? Well, I'm considering it now. That could be good. Um... We know that there is a new world out there somewhere. My national ideas eventually will give me a free colonist, so there is going to be a way for us to colonize. That could be worthwhile, especially since I can't push east into the Empire. So I'll spend some time consolidating my region, but while I'm sitting around waiting for coalition stuff to tick down and build up manpower, colonizing is one way we could be trying to improve ourselves and grow. I, I don't know. It might be worthwhile. It's not the worst idea, certainly. Spent a little time improving with outraged countries and our subjects. Wex apparently was losing a little bit. Uh, sure. So, do we want to do tech now? Yes. Renaissance thought, naval ambitions. That also gave me some extra, like, colonizing range, so that's not so bad. So yeah, unless I changed any of the idea groups. By the way, I know that in 1.29, espionage changed, and that's where you get the aggressive expansion impact now. Not to mention, fabricate claims on behalf of subjects. That's okay. Yearly corruption can be helpful. This is okay. Embargo and privateer efficiency, depending on how you play the trade game. 
It's not the worst thing in the world. At the end of the day, though, yearly corruption, aggressive expansion, it's okay. It's better than it used to be. I still don't think espionage is worth it, though. Trade ideas are tempting. Diplomatic could be tempting. Influence is not as good as it used to be. Vassals, liberty desire. Annexation cost. Relations, reputation. Envoy travel time. That just hurts. Influence is still okay, but only if you're really playing the vassal game. We're going to go for exploration. And have a little fun with it. I will save up for the military tech rather than go for the ideas. Uh, we can't exactly reduce army maintenance if everyone is drilling, so we're going to ignore that. Still need more men in order to fully reinforce. Good grief. Good gravy, it's taken forever. Alright, finally, tech. Boom! Okay, we're ahead of time in all of our tech, which means now we focus exclusively on ideas. Abin power, I'm not sure what to do with it. Let's go ahead and grab the explorers and conquistadors. Which means now I want to get an explorer. New World Charters, don't need those yet. Doing fine on the uh, influence of the nobility now, so that's nice. Could hire or cast a spell for the mages. Funding research is the only way I can think of to really gain influence. New World Missions, Native Uprising. Oh yeah, if we're going to be doing that, we're going to end up needing to have a native policy. Well, once I get a colonist, we'll worry about that. Native coexistence, very good if you don't want to ever have an army in the New World, but if I expect other people to compete with me for colonizing, I'm going to keep an army over there anyway. So I might as well go for the more aggressive colonizing and uh, suppress the, uh, the, uh, the uh, rebels, natives, whatever. Nobility, yeah, all right. I'll spend some of the power in order to get that, um, get that loyalty up again. If we can just get this up to 40% so we can get rid of the manpower recovery speed loss. Also save money on maintaining an army. That wouldn't be so bad. I probably should save up for a manufactory. Ooh, I can only imagine a manufactory with the uh, meteor would be fantastic. Eventually. Maybe not right now. We're about to get another government reform. Land theft. Side with the clergy or the nobility? Hmm. Probably side with the nobility. Well, wait, but then they gain influence again. Okay, is there anything that's going to happen that gets them more influence? No. So right now they're okay. The clergy are easy to buy off. You just give them money. So that doesn't really hurt me. I will do this. 99%. That is more than the 10% you said it was going to be. We're at 99.9%. .9%. That's really close, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay. Well, let's just go ahead and make that generous donation. Get that tax modifier up. Government reform. Decentralized bureaucracy for promoted cultures, or centralized for autonomy change. Cultures are pretty good. Autonomy change is really good. I'm going to go for the autonomy change, I think. I like burning that down. Just makes you more powerful in general. Gets you more income, more manpower, more anything you want, really. And at least at this stage, we won't gain a whole lot of value. That said, I could spend some diplomatic power to make the Redfoot Halflings happier. Which I think I will do. That should increase my income a little bit. <laughs> Didn't make a huge difference. I find you generally want to accept cultures that are not part of your culture group. Because these guys already have like a muted uh, downside. It's not a huge deal. Having someone in your culture group not be an accepted culture. But the other people, those are the ones who have the largest penalties. So, Creek Gnome? They're Creek Gnomes. They live in the creeks. How cute. Oh, good. One of our generals improved. Troops are getting uh, drilled up pretty nicely. So, when am I going to have this whole Annex Vassal thing expire? We're a human nation. Ooh, I didn't even see that. Annex Subjects expires in 1486. Five more years? Ugh. Good thing I don't need these vassals for anything. Sorry, diplomats for anything. Fine, whatever. Just keep making money. Prospering times. Power. Yes. Um, do I want more military power? Yes. I would rather continue working down the military idea group. Uh, we probably should hire an explorer. Arthur Red Driver is his name. 
We want to build up some... Actually, I don't... I can't build up any new ships. All right, where's my navy? You. Okay, hang on. St stay still. I need to split off a couple units. Okay, you guys get Explorer. The rest of you continue with the protecting of the trade in the Bay of Wines. Okay, so you. Nothing to explore. Oh, sorry. Send you to port. Okay. Explore the Northern Thaw. Or the North Ulios Lament Ocean. Or the West Salahad Coast Sea. So I don't know where any of this is. So we can go to regions. The Northern Thaw. This is the ocean, and this is the coast. So do you want to go south or west and north? I want to go north. Let's start there. Hopefully we don't lose these guys from a lack of uh, ship range. And let's see how well these guys can do. Petition for redress. Peasants. Gonna arrive up in Ail Kendar. Which is right up here, which if I turn on the fort is a, not an issue, and I'll send an army. In farmlands. Yeah, let's just let them get a little bit of their, um, a little bit of morale back. Civil war and the guys who contested us. Justice is sweet. Alright. Peasants. Attack. Peasants are easy to kill. Like so. They are dead. Drill. Turn off of that. Okay. Looking good. We have found things we can colonize. The Lonely Isle. It's all alone. There's no one here beside me. Hey, Splendor. Uh, since we are going to be playing the colonizing game, going for higher developed colonies could be good. Alternatively, Feudal de Jour Law. Aggressive Expansion Impact. Transfer Subjects in a War Deal. War Taxes. Cavalry. I'll do this in preparation. I don't know. More development is just good. Generally speaking, if you can afford it. We have Laurentish peasants who want to fire in a couple places. Here? Eh. I got an army nearby. I'm not worried about it. Um, improved relations. Diplomatic reputation would speed things up as far as annexation. When that thing expires. Can we get a minister who's better? No, not from the nobility. I mean, I kind of want the power, so we're going to go for the level 2 guy, even though I kind of think the Diplo Rep is more useful right now. I have an idea group to work through. Dang it. We need it. All right, exploration was finished. Did my ships get damaged? Not at all. They're fine. Cool. So let us explore the coast of the Northern Thaw. Did we find anything else? I see a little landmass right here. The Southern Guiana Basin. Okay. Sure. I think this is going to be a very fast mission. Let's see. BPEC is getting more alliances. Seems fine. Uh, how are we doing on that army professionalism? 4.31 can almost slacken things a little bit. Prestige from land battles. We'll grab that. We'll also be able to grab the uh, yearly prestige increase soon. Okay. You're ready to continue the exploration. Let's go to the Ulios, whatever it was. So once I have a colonist, this is a good place to go. It's going to increase my range by a lot. Looks like we did find some more land over here. Pate. Five development. Very aggressive natives. Yep. That's the thing we'll have to worry about. What is this? The Far Isle. Oh, this is owned by Vinale. These guys are supposed to play the colonizing game, it looks like. And yes, sure enough. They have exploration ideas. They're moon elves. Cool. Gwed declares war for independence. We knew that was going to happen. Gwed is considered to be a world power. Cool. Can I rival them? No, not until they're actually independent. Well, darn. Yeah, we knew they weren't going to stick around for long. They helped these guys conquer a bit of land, but there was no way. No way in heck it was going to last. All right, my maximum manpower is 37,000. We need to start building up our force limit again. I think now's a good time to start building some cannons. Using some of that manpower. Cannons, of course. Very good. Get that extra fire value in the back line. Also siege things down a lot faster. Nobles demand privileges. Fine. Why can't I build here? Need 30 ducats. We don't have a lot of ducats coming in for some reason. It's because I'm drilling. Hmm. Alright, found some more land, it looks like, that we'll have to colonize eventually. 
Is this sea region not part of the Northern Thaw? I guess it wasn't. Okay. Cool. So we're getting some good exploration in. Let us explore the coastline of those areas. Find out what's going on. So where do I want to go? Good question. What connects to my trade lines? Um, it looks like going directly over here would work fine for me. Going up to the north could lead to the Dragon Coast and then go south. Might be more directly beneficial to colonize down this direction into what I assume will be kind of the equivalent of the Caribbean. Probably. Great expectations. Nobility. No! No, 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 no. I'm not letting them have more influence. We're not doing this again. Great expectation. You just did this! Okay, there needs to be like a cool down. There needs to be a cool down on this event. All right, so this is a good place to end things. We are finding it looks like a whole new continent that we can uh, colonize. Finding out a lot more about the world. That's great. Starting to build up some of that manpower again, finally. All right, I feel, I feel like we're making some good progress here. Just not a lot of warfare, but we needed to cool our jets anyway. So cool. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.